My name's Heather. Uh, I've been diagnosed with celiac disease since 2007 and my youngest daughter was diagnosed just two years later. Uh, being diagnosed with celiac disease can be quite daunting at first and moving to a gluten-free diet, but as long as you get to know what you can and can't eat and how to avoid accidentally consuming gluten, then it's quite easy to do. You'll soon become an expert. I make my kitchen a safe place uh, to cook. So obviously there is gluten in the kitchen because not everyone in the family has celiac disease. But I make sure that the gluten-free food is in separate cupboards and uh, separate boxes. And we make sure we have a separate toaster and separate butter and jam. We do all use the same cooker, so we have to use separate pots for our food. And we make sure that when we're using the oven, all of our gluten-free food is on a separate tray and in the top part of the oven. Now, it might seem like an awful lot of hard work to start with, but it is really worth it to make sure that you are staying gluten-free and you avoid becoming ill through cross-contamination. I shop in all areas of the supermarket. Uh, I do use the gluten-free food aisle, um, but all the other sections do have lots of gluten-free foods in them. Uh, some of them might actually surprise you, things like breakfast cereals or crisps or noodles. Um, but it's really important that you check the ingredients list. The, the easiest thing is looking to see if it says gluten-free on it, or if it does have the picture of the crossed grain sign, which is a grain um, crossed through. If that's there, then it's perfectly safe to eat. If there's no sign of that, then I'll check the ingredients list to see if there is uh, wheat or barley, rye or oats uh, listed in the ingredients and if they're in bold or highlighted. If they're not there, then the product is still gluten-free and safe enough to eat. What you do have to watch out for though is a may contain warning. So if the product does say may contain gluten or wheat, it means that there's a chance with the way it's been made that there might be some gluten in there. So my advice on that point would, would just be to avoid it. Another reason to check labels regularly is sometimes without warning, a manufacturer might add gluten back into uh, the ingredients list where a product may have been gluten free before. Of course, that does work to our advantage sometimes and occasionally a manufacturer might remove gluten from the ingredients and a product becomes gluten free. Finally, if I'm in any doubt, I'll check the Celiac UK app, the gluten free food checker. There's planning involved, so uh, I will check, do a bit of research to see if the venue can provide gluten-free food and then I'll phone them to check and see if they can produce it safely without a risk of cross-contamination. If I'm in any doubt, I'll probably just avoid it. I have a list of venues uh, that I know I can go and get uh, enjoyable, safe, gluten-free food. There are lots and lots of places now that cater very well for celiac disease, so it's not something that restricts me at all. Uh, Celiac UK also have a really good venue guide and your local group can advise you of where's best to eat out locally. When it comes to parties, uh, trips, social events, things like that, I will check ahead with the organiser of the food, but usually we can manage to find a way to make sure there's something for my daughter and myself to eat, either by the organiser providing it or by me providing it myself. I joined Celiac UK. Uh, they give invaluable advice um, as to what to eat, where to eat and how to manage a gluten-free diet. Um, I also phone Celiac UK helpline if I need to um, and speak to my dietitian if I have any issues or questions about my gluten-free diet. And I do also use social media just to gather the thoughts of other people with celiac disease too. I also get prescriptions for gluten-free food um, through the gluten-free food service run by my local pharmacy. They also, as part of that service, give me an annual health check where they can identify any issues I might be having with my diet and have that checked by a GP uh, or the dietitian. Your pharmacy should contact you with a date for your review. If they don't though, just get in touch and organise one yourself. The reviews are really useful for identifying if you do have any issues with your diet and addressing them. Having celiac disease involves a significant change to your diet, as well as day-to-day -day situations involving food. My advice would be be patient and be prepared. 
Be patient, help others understand why you need to uh, have a gluten-free diet for medical reasons and that it's a medical necessity. That way people will be more patient and more supportive of you and will understand better. And be prepared so anytime you're eating away from home you always have options. If you're the parent of a child uh, with celiac disease like I am, it's really important to have regular dialogue with anybody that's looking after them or responsible for them when it comes to food. Uh, this might mainly be school, but it could be after school activities too. It's particularly important to let them know what they can and can't eat and ask them to contact you in advance if your child is going to be doing any food-based activity, if that's planned. Um, that means that you can help them adjust the activity or provide a gluten-free substitute food and your child isn't excluded then from the activity. Your school should also be able to provide a gluten-free meal option, so it's worth speaking to them about how that happens. Celiac UK have a really useful pack for parents uh, of children at school, so it's worth getting hold of that. Now having a teenage celiac daughter, um, it's easy to see the increased pressures that they become under with uh, regards to peer pressure, places they want to go with their friends, um, and a little bit of resentment about celiac disease itself and having to be different. But with the right support, the right reminders of all the amazing places they can eat, um, and the right encouragement of their friends, it's not a problem and it is something that they can get over and get through. In my view, there's never been a better time to be diagnosed with celiac disease. There's a better range of products, uh, there's a greater choice of venues to eat out in, there's a better awareness of cross-contamination and really good support from the celiac community. Making the change from a gluten diet to a gluten-free diet can be challenging, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Good luck. Mm -hmm.